Good morning, viewers. Uh, apologies, this has taken a while to get out to you. Um, I think half term has hit a little bit. And um, this glorious weather doesn't help. Uh, it's not an incentive to stay indoors and work, is it? So I hope you're all getting out and enjoying this beautiful weather. And uh, the gardens are hopefully looking magnificent by now. <laughs> we'll have to start doing garden tours when we're allowed. Um, so this morning I'm going to do movement three of the Janicek for you. And because it's quite lightweight and small again, um, we will play through it all. And then I'm going to start the fourth movement, which is a bit more energetic and a bit more fun. So we can make a start on that um, and uh, yeah, enjoy the two different movements. So um, I will play the first half of the third movement stopping in the first time by actually i'll do the repeat a little bit as well so you get used to the idea of uh going back one two three <laughs> dynamics it's a light sort of bucolic dance I'm thinking sort of pastoral lilting and uh, I think everything has to be placed and then replay with the dynamics he's really playing around with the dynamics in a kind of uh, just to bring the piece to life a little bit so really loud with a crescendo at the beginning and then straight away to P like this <laughs> So you can really kind of, now I've split up that slur at the beginning because it's hard to do that repeated note and get it rhythmically right and in your head. So I thought it's just easier just to do an up bow. Everyone else is slurring, so you won't, shouldn't hear the change of bow. And it just helps you give that little oomph on the up and then straight on the down be a little more gentle. So, oh, sorry, wrong note. And then really, really light on those PP notes and then straight away into MF. You can replace that and make that nice and strong. And then they, these are lifted. And we're going to crescendo through that D, that dotted minimum D. Nice big G and then it's like you're sighing away. So, and then it's worth just practicing because you've gone right into pian pianissimo in the first time bar and then on the repeat straight back to forte so that'd be really good to practice that what i'll do is i will play that again and go on into the second time bar this time and go to the end one two three <laughs> second half real contrast in dynamics you have in bar 12 a lovely bulge so really go to the middle of that bar so joyful and then in bar 14 at the very end the last crotchet of bar 14 is suddenly loud and the whole of bar 15 is loud in a contrast it's a sudden sort of emphatic uh, exclamation I think so if I go from bar 13 and then it melts away you hear straight away comes back to light and you've always got this lifted idea 
because he's got the accent the dynamics underneath so lift your bow as you come away da 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 yum and uh, you've got the same then in bar 23 you've got this emphatic thing again and then the little triplets at the end are just a sort of throw away light it's the end um it's quite pretty and joyful i think but in in, in a sense of end going towards the end um i'll go from bar 23 and i think we can have a lot of fun with the pause on the rest before the last note so really put big glasses there or something just to make sure um because that could be quite a comedy moment and uh, we just pause and then all place the last note together which would be really fun so there's not very much to that little piece it's very sweet and light and needs to just have a lilting feeling so this is why i'd like to move on then to movement four the presto now this is much more of a feisty dance and a potentially good could go quite fast now i know it says staccato but i don't think we want it really really spiky i think what he means is just don't play it uh detache like our usual detache stroke is not like that but then not too spiky so somewhere in between we have these sort of i think of it maybe the loud certainly is more marcato and kind of just that sort of detached feel so that's the sort of bow stroke is and as you get faster then that will get easier and lighter and so i will play up to the first time bar and i'm going to play it really nice and steady for you to hear exactly how i'd like all the dynamics and um uh, bow strokes oh, one two three one two just practicing going from one moment to the back to the next so that's a nice steady speed and um, actually quite hard to make the viola sort of resound you might have heard um, a couple of times there just because of the speed I think I hope so I'll now play it up a little bit up to speed and I think don't work too hard make the bow do the nice work and we can get a bit of drama I think as we get faster um, so I'll play it one more time for you up back back up a bit more to speed one, diminuendo in bar 26 so that we're back to piano even with the accents just make them a little nudge and actually by 20 uh, 4 5 6 7 8 9 29 back to being quite emphatic I think I was a bit polite there and then as I say 33 really let rip in fact I'll go from 31 you can let rip even here <laughs> Great 
then if you can come right away from fortissimo to piano that's going to be really exciting and then you do the crescendo back up so that's the exciting fourth movement we might even potentially go a little bit faster and let the bows fly a little bit more it might get a bit easier just get as you get the dance feeling and feeling in one so have a little try um and we'll have a go at all of that in the sectional and maybe play through all this stuff we've done before so it's just keeping it all ticking over and otherwise hope you're well keeping up the practice and hope to see you on thursday really looking forward to catching up with you maybe with a glass of wine okay